what I say to you is enjoy nature, enjoy looking at all these beautiful birds, especially on a gorgeous sunny day like it is today. There are four main flyways in North America, the Atlantic, Mississippi, Central and Pacific. While the flyways may overlap at the edges, they serve distinct populations of birds, beginning in the east. The Atlantic Flyway goes from the Arctic Circle down the Atlantic coast inland as far as the Allegheny Mountains south to Florida where some birds remain for the winter. Other species continue on from there over water to the Caribbean, with the end point for many birds being Cuba or Jamaica. The flyway also extends out to sea, with pelagic species migrating parallel to the coast. Around 500 bird species utilize this flyway, including many species of songbirds like blue grosbeaks, yellow rumped warblers, and orchard orioles. Overall, the Atlantic Flyway is notable for its great diversity of habitats, from salt marshes to forests to dry grassland, with a corresponding diversity of bird species. The Mississippi Flyway, as the name suggests, follows the general path of the Mississippi River in the United States. As a distinct flyway, it ends at the Gulf of Mexico. Some species that use this flyway winter there while others cut straight across the Gulf to make landfall in eastern Mexico and still others merge onto the Central Flyway to the west and travel on to Central or South America. Some sources estimate that 40% of the waterfowl in North America use this flyway to migrate. Some songbirds like the bobolink also utilize this flyway. This small but chunky bird is one of the world's most distinguished songbird migrants. Point Pelly, also in Ontario, is mainland Canada's south southernmost point and notable for its mild climate. Thrusting dramatically into Lake Erie, this peninsula features a wide variety of habitats, including open marshes, forested swamps, brushy overgrown fields, and sandy beaches. Because of its southern reach, and the temperature moderating effect of a large body of water all around, Point Pelly is warm enough to be home to species more commonly associated with southern latitudes, like the brilliant yellow Prothona tree warbler. Even more exciting for birders, the peninsula's shape and location make it a potent migrant trap in autumn, as southbound birds travel down it as far as they can get before waiting for favorable winds to head out over the open water. Rarities at Point Pelly are usually birds from further west, like Mountain Bluebird, Townsend Solitaire, and American White Pelican.
There's a Canada goose. And by the way, the Canadians are sensitive about this. It's not a Canadian goose, they point out. It's a Canada goose because they don't carry passports. They're Canada goose, but that's just an aside. Now, this goose is flying alone. And look at the difference between that and this V formation. Now, I wonder why these geese are flying in this V formation as opposed to flying side by side or flying alone. Now, this has been tested and researched. The answer really is amazing, and it's very precise. In this formation, which is a V formation, this flock of Canada geese is able to fly 71% further than they're able to do flying alone or flying side by side. So these dumb creatures have figured out the principles of aerodynamics before the Wright brothers had any clue about it. It's the power of lift. Flying like this, they can fly 1,000 miles without stopping. Let's apply the 71%. Without that, it's only 600 miles. And then you've noticed another thing, or you've heard about another thing. The lead changes. The lead bird is taking a lot of the wind resistance. And when he begins to slow down the flock, he gets the message, maybe through the honking you hear is move over, you're slowing us down. And then he moves back, somebody else takes over. A wonderful team sport. Everybody helps out. When the team slows down, you hope to speed it up, to get to its destination. One other thing I'd point out about this V formation. Look at that now. Think about the line of sight. Think about the field of vision. Think about situational awareness. 
flying this way, they have a much broader lens, able to detect their terrain, the presence of predators, enemies, and so, and so on, and act accordingly. Now, I like to use this metaphor when we talk about the power of team alignment, working together, using this, this research to demonstrate that if you work with powerful alignment, you can go 71% further. Don't sacrifice that by flying side by side, or worst of all, flying in opposite direction.